flight attendant was my baby and my project, and I was there from the beginning. Are you ready? All right. So I kind of felt like, oh my God, if this works, oh, this will be really great. Let's go. Okay, let's roll, please. <laughs> hey, Mark. But if it doesn't work, this is all going to be my fault. <laughs> After the success of season one, I am not gonna lie, I was terrified to do a season two. I only wanna do it if we can make it better and bigger. And once we figured out what that story was gonna be, first I was like, are you fucking kidding me? How are we gonna do this? I'm doing this whole trying to be a good person thing. It's hard. After season one premiered, uh, it was a little bit of a shock how well received the show was. I feel like it had a very satisfying ending, but we had left little pieces to play with going into season two. For me, the challenge was what else can we show the world about Cassie? What else can we show the world about Kaylee? Well, I used to be the life of every party. I guess eventually you gotta just like grow up and be an adult, right? You think? Oh my gosh, if the amount of conversations we had as the, our creative team, I mean, hundreds maybe, possibly a thousand. So it was a lot of questions like, what do we want to get into? And obviously the answer is recovery because we saw Cassie take her first baby step towards recovery in the finale of season one. We catch up with her one year later and it really feels like she's radically changed her life, but the very first thing she tells us is, I moved to LA. I started dating this great guy, Marco. Picked up a part-time job. What are you involved in, Cassie? Okay, okay. I'm an asset for the CIA. <laughs> a lot of the excitement and charge that she got out of being a party girl and being an addict in season one have been sort of reassigned <laughs> into this new position of being a CIA asset. She gets sent to Berlin on a case and has to follow this mark around. And of course, she always gets a little overly involved. It seems like it's working out for her. She certainly seems confident that it's working out for her. And then um, the reason the show exists is because it is not going to work out for her. She ends up seeing a woman that looks exactly like her. This isn't just someone that kind of looks like her. This is someone that's making a choice to look like her. She is going to get entangled in a mystery that is going to take her all around the world. Someone is pretending to be me. Hello? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's bad, yeah, very yeah, bad. Yeah, Terrifying. For season two, we're obviously bringing back everybody's favorites. We're bringing back Annie and Max. Get out of my house or tell me what is on your hand. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God, stop screaming. We're bringing back Megan. What are you doing here? There's Shane. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, beauty. We're bringing back Davey. You have to uh, press the pod. <laughs> Oh my God, is that your voice? <laughs> a lot of season two is about each individual character finding their own footing. I just mostly miss being self-sufficient and you know, like feeling valuable. Annie and Max really deals with what their love is and how much they can let go of their insecurities or grow together. At the same time, Max and Annie are around to help Cassie. You have to do your Max thing. Okay. They sort of get entwined in the spider web of her insane chaotic life again. They went through my purse. Yeah, I think they went through everything. No, 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 no. Everyone's hunting for something. I spend my entire season running after Megan. You've been hunting Megan for a day. I've been hunting Megan for over a year. Oh my god, I'm not hunting anyone. In season two, we find Megan on the run, hiding because she committed an act of treason. She is a nervous wreck. She is panic-stricken. She is a hot mess. I have a bounty on my head, half a million for whoever turns me in. Can you believe it? I'm a prize. <laughs> those are people that the fans loved, and I wanted to make sure those stories really sang. The cast has been phenomenal, every single one of them. Okay. Okay. Look, we don't we don't always have to hug. We knew that we wanted the season to be bigger. And once we started idealizing what it was going to be, I realized it was going to be 10 times bigger than season 1. It's huge in scale. There were stunts and tasers. There were things blowing up. We do a lot of Hitchcockian um, scenes. 
We often shoot in a high angle to put the audience on edge. The beauty of season two is that we've switched to LA. New scenery, new change of pace, new locations. We've captured a really wide swath of the different worlds that make up Los Angeles. I just love the idea that this was LA for LA and iconic LA. Like the Santa Monica Pier was our biggest location. We shut down the entire pier. We've really brought LA into this series. A lot of people did a lot of work to make it look the way it is, and it's fantastic. Part of the joy of Flight Attendant is the travel log that it is. And so in season two, uh, we went to two places, and the first was Berlin. We picked a European city with a lot of stories of intrigue, and history plays very heavily. After Berlin, we got to go to Reykjavik, Iceland. We went to this amazing rock cliff and we saw copters and geysers. And I was like, we're going to Iceland in December. Are we insane? Like, are we insane? It's like three degrees that, what are we thinking? It ended up being the most magical because it was during Christmas and it was as if I was at the North Pole shooting a show and it couldn't have been better. Would you like to try our world famous way? The sheep's head? Oh, no, <laughs> no, it looks, it looks great, but maybe another time. Thank you. It looks so good, it looks fake. And I actually am worried people are gonna think it was a soundstage. <laughs> this isn't a show we can shoot on a soundstage. Like, we either gotta go to these places or not. We went there. Thank you very much. <sighs> what is this? Oh, I think you know. No. No, 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 I am not doing this again. In season two, it was really important that we kept the Mind Palace conceit from season one. It's part of what makes the show special. It's part of the unique brand of storytelling. We have the hotel lobby in Berlin. That's where she wakes up after the bombing, and it's the thing that her brain latches onto. The big challenge this year is who is she gonna meet in the Mind Palace? We have to do something different because the Alex story from season one is wrapped. So what is that gonna be for her? And then we decided it was gonna be herself. Are you, are you me? Oh God, don't answer that. So the Mind Palace season two is gonna be this exciting manifestation of this theme of acceptance of the different sides of yourself. Having her naturally have to engage and like wrestle these different versions of herself is a huge part of the bedrock of recovery. Just go inside. You know we're going to anyway. Everything we do ends up a disaster. Are you serious? What the fuck? Who the hell is that? Logistically, it's been insane. I started interviewing people who had done it before. I talked to the folks that did Orphan Black and got a lot of insight into what their process was. It's really a combo platter where you're doing motion control. You're doing physical tricks where we have a cast of amazing doubles that have stepped in and amazing stunt people. So weird, right? <laughs> Wild, wild experience in that mind palace. Yeah, that mind palace will haunt me for the rest of my life. Who are you? I'm you, silly. If you made better choices. Bartender, can we get two sodas with a little twist of lime? Okay. Oh my gosh, fans should be excited about season two flight attendant because season two is such an adventure. It has all of the mystery, suspense, and fun of season one. And just like season one, it also has a very kind of sometimes frustratingly human story running underneath it. This whole sobriety thing, it's never not hard. It is a crazy journey through sobriety, addiction, magical realism, and finding oneself through oneself. Your entire world's falling apart. You are holding it together. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk about the women of the flight attendant. You've got Kaylee Woko. You've got Rose Perez. You've got Zasha Mamet. This is pussy power in all its magnificence. It is the Mount Rushmore of female comedy. Also, behind the scenes, you have Silver Tree, our secret sauce behind the camera, and you've got me, the women behind the scenes, the women in front of the camera. We did it. We made a good season. Let's turn things up. I can't believe what we did. You lied to me. And I can't wait for everyone to see what we did. What happened? Because it's kind of extraordinary. Oh.